I've had some videos where people have been asking me to do some voiceovers, and this is a little uh, cable chain, and we scaled it up 300% and printed it out of PETG and the Prusa, and uh, yeah, it works pretty good. It's going to take like eight or nine days to get all the links we need. We're doing it for the uh, overhead gantry. Hey guys, we just got a couple of these cheap, inexpensive uh, tool holders from Tool Lots. I think I paid like, I don't know, 35 or 40 bucks. Come on in real quick. I just want you to see that the base, this is a Mitsutoyu 10th syndicator, and I just want to show you that it's loaded. So you can see it goes both ways. I guess we'll see if we can adjust this. It's probably easy. Now, I'm going to spin this, see if you guys can see. So, I don't know how hard the material is, or anything like that, but you can see that, man, what's that, 110? I think I paid like, I don't know, 45 bucks a piece for these things over at Tool Lots. It's pretty crazy. I'm sure I'll catch some flack for this, but I've been using these carbide six flute countersinks for a long time. You can get these things from McMaster Car. I think they're about 40 bucks. This is a 3 8 one, and uh, it doesn't have a sharp point, so you have to use some offset in your cam software, but these things make for some pretty amazing chamfers, and you can chamfer really fast. So if you have a part, like a fixture plate or something that needs a bunch of chamfering, uh, they just work super good. This one's made by Melon. Like I said, just a carbide 90 degree countersink and they work really good. So you don't have to use one of those single flute or a good old fashioned, you know, two flute spot drill. You can use one of these countersinks and it makes chamfering just really fast. While we're waiting for our new machine to, to arrive, we don't have a great work holding solution to make a couple of these mold bases for some uh, projects that we were that we need to get done and so I've looked I've looked for a variety of different solutions we have some mighty bite clamps we could put this in a vise we could actually bolt it to a fixture plate and then to the table at the end of the day I decided to try out one of these magnetic chuck setups and so this is a permanent magnetic chuck setup that we bought from Tool Lots. It, they're not dirt cheap, um, they're about 400 bucks. This is an insanely long Allen wrench used to uh, turn this thing on and off. Most commonly, this kind of thing is used for grinding. But I do know that the really powerful ones that are electromagnetic that you generally run on three phase power, there are a lot of mold shops that use those because they're just a very convenient way to hold something and they give you access to the entire perimeter of the part. So that's why we ended up investing in this one. And uh, believe it or not, it's actually working pretty good. I had to turn all the sound down in this video because we didn't realize it, but almost all of the background music had a radio station playing. So YouTube would flag us. So this is just uh, one of the guys here in the shop getting this thing out of the uh, package so we can get onto the machine. I totally admit we had no idea if this thing was going to hold tight enough. We tried one of the grinding vices or the grinding chucks, like the, the fine pole, and it wasn't even close. So we ended up putting this 246 block on there, and it was pretty snug. I was able to get it to move just barely, but then when we flipped it down, uh, you know, onto its long edge, it just, you know, obviously it's just sitting here on this little rollaway cart, but it just, it just was not moving. So... These things claim about 215 pounds per square inch. So, uh, you know, we've got 20, you know, four by six, that's uh, 24 square inches times 200 pounds. It's, it's got quite a bit of holding force. And the plates that we put on here, you'll see in a little bit, are uh, 10 inches by 17 inches. So they had quite a bit of holding force, plenty for what we were trying to do with a uh, small diameter feed mill. All right, well, we used the sky hook to get everything all set up, and here is that mag chuck in the X7. We tried it in another machine, and unfortunately, we were just having some like chip clearing issues, so we moved it over into the X7. And uh, yeah, this is just me loading everything in with the sky hook. Man, that sky hook has been so useful, and I love this like comic mode that uh, the fil you know, it's like the filter or whatever in the video editing software. It's just pretty trick, but you can see that I just I ended up having to move the tool setter all the way back because the part is 14.4 inches in X and we only uh, uh, the machine only has about 15.7 inches in X so that's it we did a couple of test passes right here just to make sure that everything was set up and this is it I'm getting ready to do some cutting
the sound never seems to come across real well in these videos. It always sounds, even when the cut is just the most buttery, beautiful, smooth cut, a lot of times there must be frequencies that these like phones and microphones can pick up that the human ear doesn't. Because I can tell you that generally speaking, it was uh, the cut sounded really good. And uh, it's a really shallow depth of cut. I think we were 7,000 feet, six or 7,000 feet per tooth. And uh, 70% step over on a half inch die jet. This was obviously a full slot right here. We pulled the manifold off of the X7 and just ran this lock line because I'm setting up a fog buster for this thing. So I just thought you guys like to see what we're getting at. This is a really long tool path and um, it doesn't matter. It's not, it isn't something that we're really worried about the time. Just set it and let it run. I got a uh, old base that I need to make and we decided to use this little die jet high feed mill and you can see that it's leaving a pretty clean little cut even when it's doing this uh, full slot. Look at that. I wish we could just run full air blast but instead we're just running we're running this big heavy duty flood coolant for now. We pulled the manifold off that, that came with the machine. So, and we're gonna run this just so that when we run the fog buster, we have a little bit better access. And if we ever needed to, we could put the old manifold back on.